Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Critters at War, Air, Land, and Sea, and the expansion Flies, Lies, and Supplies. This is a two-player card game that takes roughly about 10 to 30 minutes to play and is for ages eight and up. And this is a two-player game. Basically, with Air, Land, and Sea, you're going to be having three little cows, and you're going to get a hand of six cards. Players are going to play cards face up and face down into the three available zones, and they're going to try and score these zones. This game is a Marvel Snap style game, the fun game that you'd play on your phone, uh, but you're going to be utilizing, you know, the tabletop itself. Uh, you're going to be playing down different types of critters and utilizing their unique abilities like airdrop and ambush, along with just straight up heavy tanks, to try and control the most value in two of the three locales. You have a unique little aspect to the game too that you can actually forfeit if you need to. Forfeiting is going to allow you to lose less points and your opponent's going to instantly win, but it'll give you an opportunity to come back in later rounds because your hand might not be as useful as you might assume it to be. Uh, the game will play up until somebody hits a number of points, and in this case 12, and that player who hits those points at the end of a round is the winner. Most points wins the game, air, land, and sea, critters at war. Let's talk about the setup, how to play, and of course, my review. Shuffle them up and deal them out so that they're facing each player separately on different opposite sides. Uh, from there, you're going to take the cards for the deck. There's 18 cards in total. You'll shuffle them up, deal six to each player, and leave six to the side. Then, take the Supreme Commander cards, shuffle them up, and then give one to each player and flip them over. The player who gets the first player card is the player who starts the round off, and then the second player takes second. Take aside all the extra tokens and set them aside within reach. Players are going to be utilizing those for victory points, and you're basically ready to begin the game. Yep, it's a quick, simple setup. Playing the game is as simple as setting it up, and the way that it works is the player who has the first player marker will begin. You will take one action of three, and then you will pass. And that next player will take an action of the three and pass. And you'll keep going throughout the game up until everyone has emptied their hand of cards or a player has chosen to withdraw. On your turn, you'll select one of these actions. Action one is you can play a card face up from your hand to one of these locations, which are called theaters, uh, and have it match. So in this case here, if I want to place an aerodome, this is a white air card, I have to place it on the air theater or location. When I place it, the number on the top left hand side is the power of the card or strength. And it's also going to have an ability, whether it be an instant ability or whether it be an infinite ability is going to be designated next to the name of the card. In this case here, it says that I can play cards of strength three or less in any theater or location that I so choose. That is one action. Place a card that matches the location on the location on my side of the playing field. That strength is going to be added up at the end of the game to try and control this area, just like in Marvel Snap. The next action I could take instead is I can, instead of go ahead and placing it face up on a location, I can actually use the back side of the cards as wilds and place them on any theater of my choice. Place it in sea, land, or air. There is no ability though, so you don't get to trigger anything. However, you do get the two power for that location. The last thing you can do is withdraw. Withdrawing is pretty simple. You can say, ah, I don't like my hand, I don't like the way the field is going, I don't think I can win this round, in which case I'm going to choose to quit. When you choose to withdraw, you'll look at your first player card, or second player if that's who you are, and you will check to see how many cards you have in your hand. And based on that number, we'll determine how many victory points your opponent will get for withdrawal. In which case, that is going to end the round and you'll reset the next round. Otherwise, if you continue playing out your turns, what's going to happen is you're going to have a number of cards in each of the different theaters with numbers associated with them, and you will check to see who has the most locations. So in this case here, if this is what the board looked like, uh, you would add up your side versus your opponent's. I have a 6 and a 2 here, that is 8. My opponent here has a 4 and a 3, and that is 7. So in which case, I would win the land theater. The C Theater only has the uh, second player uh, with cards here, and it adds up to like 16 points, so they're going to win the C t uh, Theater. And then this one over here, I've got 9, 10, 11, 15 points, so I would win the Air. So Air and Land would go to me, and I need 2 out of 3 to win, so I have the 2, you have the 1, or my opponent has the 1, in which case I would win the round, and I would instantly score 6 victory points, which is halfway to 12. So you can see how important withdrawing can be if you don't think you can win. 
Either way, whether or not you, you withdraw or everybody plays all the cards in their hand, you are then going to set up for a new round. You'll take all the cards that have been played, including the cards that have not been played. You will shuffle these guys up and you will give each player a hand of six new cards. In addition to that, you're also going to take the theaters and you're going to rotate them like a conveyor belt, thusly changing the locale of each of the theaters and how the cards will interact with them in the next round. Then rotate the first and second player order and then begin again for another round of play for uh, Critters at War. Now, like I said, you'll just continue going from round to round, playing back and forth up until somebody gets to 12 victory points. The moment that happens, or uh, as soon as somebody hits 12, you'll check to see who has the most, because somebody maybe, you know, I, I think that's, you're always going to have somebody hit 12 points. So basically that player is going to win the game. Yep, it's a pretty simple, straightforward game. So before we get into what I think about the game, I want to actually cover the expansion as well. Flies, Lies, and Supplies. And what this brings to the game. Well, first of all, Flies, Lies, and Surprise is a standalone expansion, which means that you can choose to pick up this game as opposed to the Air, Land, and Sea, and then you can play it all on its own. You do not require either game to play either game, but they do combine together as well. And what you can do is that this game here provides three additional theaters, locations, as well as another 18 cards and some unique new tokens that bring into the mix. You can take one of one location and two of another or shuffle them up and just randomly deal three out. And based on those new locations or what cards you use, because there's always six for each of them and make a deck of 18 cards based on those three, right? So if I have air, land and tech, I would have six air, six land and six tech, which I would then shuffle up and deal out, thusly changing how the game plays based on the critters that are available to you. If you play the epic version of the game, which comes with additional new first and second player markers, as well as you can play more than three locations, you can play up to five, giving, giving the deck larger number of cards and then playing out to kind of control the different locations. Uh, but the game still plays the same way. The only difference is what the critters do in the, the new locations, as well as some bonuses as to how to increase the strength on your critters. This game is Marvel Snap on a table. That is literally what this game plays like. You will have your cards. The only difference is you do not draw cards in this game unless a card says so. There's no drawing additional cards. Uh, each card is the same cost to play. It's either play one face up, play one face down, or you concede. This is more about a how far do you want to push it if you're behind and how much you want to strengthen yourself if you are ahead to guarantee the victory. Cards have a variety of different actions that you can take when playing them. They could be anywhere from having all of your face down cards, increasing their strength from two to four when a certain card is on the field, giving yourself plus three strength to each of the theaters adjacent to the card that you just played, or you can return a card that you have that is face down to your hand. And if you do, play another card. You can move one of your cards from a theater to a different theater and so on and so forth. Additionally, that's interesting about this game too, is when you play cards onto the locations, if you play another card onto the same location, you don't place it next to it, you place it on top of it, which then means that cards that are not the top card, not the face up card, those are covered cards. And certain cards are actually gonna say stuff like, if it's a covered card, do this, or uh, if it's the face up card, do this. And so cards that are like uh, on top will have unique bonuses or things that can happen to them. Whereas cards that are kind of under those cards are a little bit more protected. Additionally, face down cards while being wilds can be utilized in this game to increase their strength from other face up cards. They can be brought back to your hand to be played again. And so you're utilizing the cards in your hand to create a strategy to guarantee you take two of the three locales and secure victory. You don't need to have the most points in your hand at the start of the round to win the game. You just need to have the best combination of cards to make sure that your opponent has less victory points in two of the three areas by the time the round ends. And so you can utilize your cards in a fashion to secure your victory, regardless of having the, all the sixes in the round or having just only all the twos in the round. And so it changes from game to game, regardless of the power strength in your hand. That being said though, there are card combinations that are better than others. There are ways in which you don't think you can win based on the cards types. If you have a hand of all blue cards and no way to go to the other two locations, it's likely you're going to lose. You need to withdraw. And so withdrawing in this game is rather important. Checking to see how many cards you have in your hand and scoring your opponent as little points as possible. Conceding early can be better. Losing two points is always better than losing six if you know that there's no for sure victory. If you're guaranteed defeat, withdraw. And so withdraw plays into this game quite well. 
The fact that each round plays a little differently in the way in which the locations maneuver and based on the different locations cards associated with them can change the game as well. The fact that there are air cards that can give you benefits to the locations adjacent means that an air location in the middle of the game board as opposed to on the end is going to be either stronger or weaker and that can change how your cards function and so some rounds are better to have certain cards than other cards. The artwork in the game is wonderful. It's cute little cre creatures at war. It's a little more, I guess, warlike as opposed to like, cute, but it does have a bit of a mix there. And each of the creatures do feel unique as to what they do and how powerful they are. There's sixes in the game that have no abilities, but they're exceptionally strong, like the Super Battleship. Whereas cards like the Escalation card, which is an infinite card as long as it's on the field, can give you very powerful effects like all of your face down cards anywhere are now worth four as opposed to two, which means you can utilize a strategy to benefit you in the round. Wow, this normally would have been four, four, and two, and now it's eight, eight, and two, and that can secure you victory against your opponent's cards. Uh, adding in the expansion, changing up the theaters, locations, and being able to include new cards with combinations is always fun. And the fact that you can play either or is also a nice additive to the game. And overall, a fun experience. Quality of the game is wonderful, works pretty well, but everything's kind of light. But yeah, I really enjoyed this game, and I think you might as well. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Flies, Lies, and Supplies, and Critters at War Airland and Sea. Two games are distinctly different with unique strategies and goals and different theaters can be combined or played separately for unique gameplay. And that's wonderful. The fact that you can even add more games uh, to this list as they get added is gonna be fun as well. If you like this video, you can check out more of our videos here. You can like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button to see more videos just like this one here. We post about three to four times a week and we do a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games just like this one. In fact, last week we did play Critters at War, Air, Land, and Sea. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to controlling two theaters as opposed to your one with you next time.